Welcome. Welcome to PFC on the path to EUDR alignment webinar. Good day, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us for what is a high interest topic. And so much so that uh, today we have close to 2000 registration across, across the two sessions, morning and, and afternoon for Central European time. The objective of the webinar is to update you on the solution uh, PFC is developing to achieve alignment to UDR requirements, as well as answer your questions. A um, couple of instructions before we start. First one is the webinar is in English, and we are very pleased to offer simultaneous, simultaneous interpretation in Spanish and French. For this, you go to the bottom of your screen. On the ribbon of options, you click on the globe interpretation icon, and then you should be able to select Spanish or French channel accordingly. In terms of the Q&A, don't hesitate to already drop your type in your questions in the Q&A app. We will take them um, at the end of the, of the session. If you would like to address your question to a specific speaker, then please name them if you can. So I'm very pleased um, to introduce uh, four of our PFC experts today. Um, Maya Schra, based in Brussels. Maya is our EU representative. Hubert Hinheiser, based in Hungary. Hubert is our sustainable forest management expert. Marta Martinez Pardo, based in Geneva. Marta is our chain of custody specialist. Rob Shaw, based in Scotland, Rob recently joined PFC and is our integrity specialist. I'm Fabian Sinclair, Head of Market Engagement at PFC International, and I will be your moderator today. Before we delve into our updates, I'm delighted to welcome and introduce PFC International Secretary General and CEO, Michael Berger. Michael, welcome. Over to you. Thank you, Fabienne. Welcome everyone to this PFC webinar. We will introduce how PFC is addressing the EUDR requirements and how we implement them in the PFC framework. This year, PFC is celebrating its 25th anniversary. One of the key reasons why the Alliance was founded in 1999 was to implement and demonstrate a forest management that does not allow any deforestation. From this perspective, we consider it as a strong confirmation of our history and of our daily work that the European Commission finally is addressing deforestation in a very broad way. However, the way how they do this is perceived by lots of stakeholders as challenging and difficult. PFC, PFC has a mission which pushes us to try to support all affected parties by amending our existing system in a way that makes EUDR compliance for affected stakeholders easier. The mandate that the PFC Board of Directors gave to the Secretariat and all the stakeholders covers an adjustment of the forest management standard as well as the chain of custody standard. Additionally, we need some work concerning the necessary data processes and data gathering. This is done, and that's important for us, in compliance with PFC's key principles. We need agility, dialogue and pragmatism. Time is critical in this, you all know this. In working groups accessible for stakeholders, the hard work of fine tuning the PFC requirements will be done. These groups for chain of custody as well as for forest management are based on consensus. That's important. That's important for PFC since 1999. There is no decision just in a dark room by a big party we are doing it together with PFC stakeholders who are responsible for the final outcome of this process. 
So now I just can wish us all a very successful and interesting webinar with my colleagues that you which will who will present you a lot of information in the next minutes and hopefully I can see you all further supporting PFC in the future for this common objective not to deforest any valuable ecosystem on this planet. Thank you very much and back to you Fabian. Thank you, Michael. You mentioned agility, dialogue, and pragmatism, three key PFC principles, uh, which are certainly critical in developing solutions. These three principles are applied to our approach, processes, and work stream. In a fast track process, we have three work streams set up to achieve PFC alignment to UDR. Uh, you can see them now on your, on, your, on your screen. We have the sustainable forest management work stream, the chain of custody work stream and a data work stream. Each of those um, is organized by task for, around task forces and working groups composed of experts and various stakeholders. So now, opening the detailed update, I'm really pleased to invite our first speaker, my colleague, Maria Dercha. Hello, Hello Maria. Fabienne. Hello, Fabienne. <laughs> Let me introduce your background. So Slovenian by origin, Maya has an academic background in European studies and diplomacy. Uh, Maya has worked on sustainability and environmental topics as part of the forest and packaging sectors in Brussels, focusing on advocacy, policy and communication work, um, as well as international cooperation topics for an international development NGO in Slovenia. In January 2021, Maya joined PFC International as the EU representative. In her role, she leads the, PU, the PFC EU office in Brussels and ensures PFC's presence at European level. Maya, you are paying intensive attention to the development of numerous European affairs and specifically, of course, uh, the EU DR. Can you tell us about the recent evolution from the European Commission on the EU deforestation free regulation? Maya, please. Thank you, Fabien, for the floor. And indeed, let's have a look at the progress of preparations for the application of the EUDR, uh, which we are, of course, as you mentioned, closely following in PFC, both as interested stakeholder, but also as a member of the European Commission multi-stakeholder platform on deforestation uh, and its related subgroups. So with eight, uh, almost eight months now into the EUDR rollout, let's refresh our memory about some of the key regulation dates, which you can also see now on the screen. Uh, two key ones that indicate the start of the implementation of obligations for respective businesses uh, are 30th December 2024, for non-SMEs and then 30th June 2025 for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. Since the EUDR's entry into force, the European Commission is working on the tools that will support and facilitate the EUDR implementation. And I would like to use my time to brief you on where we stand in this regard. And this is a very timely webinar because we will be able to share some of the latest information received by the European Commission just uh, last week. And let's start with tools that are already available. So the Commission has issued uh, an FAQ or Frequently Asked Questions document with most frequent questions received from relevant stakeholders. The FAQ recently went through its first revision and we can expect the second update by the end of March. The document is available on the Commission's website and you can also access it from PFC's dedicated website. Also active and online is the EU Observatory on Deforestation and Forest Degradation. This tool uh, can serve uh, to companies as support in their risk assessment as part of the due diligence process, and it includes publicly available maps and data sets on changes in the world's forest cover and associated drivers. Um, 
And also it builds on existing monitoring tools such as Copernicus and then other sources. The observatory is non-mandatory and its verification function is limited because of uh, the levels of precision. Uh, we move uh, now to the information system. Uh, this is the system to which operators and trader, traders will be able to submit uh, their due diligence statements to comply with the EUDR. Uh, the IT system recently went through the pilot phase and companies that were participating were able to inform the Commission about systems functionalities. Now, based on the feedback, the system will go through further refinement. Uh, the Commission informed uh, last week that they also started or they have started the development of API mechanism, which will be tested in July. So this is uh, an, uh, something new. Uh, also, companies that will be using the system in the future will be able to benefit from uh, different trainings and uh, material that will be produced by the Commission uh, closer to Q2 and 3. And finally, the system is foreseen to be open for uh, companies' registrations in mid-November, and then uh, uh, the start of operation uh, will start in mid-December. We also have uh, the update about the guidance document, which is highly anticipated uh, to inform all of us about further details uh, and uh, clarifications coming from the EUDR. It seems we will see a comprehensive guidance document by the end of May, and it will contain 11 areas. Some of them include definitions on placing and making available on the market and export, legality, risk assessment and negligible risk, product scope, role of third-party verification schemes, and then agricultural use. With regards to country benchmarking, which will assign country risk level of producing commodities that are not deforestation free, we do not have any further details on the timeline, except for the classification results to be available by 30th December 2024, as communicated by the regulation itself. The Commission is currently in the process of selecting an external contractor who will support the work. Uh, and this contract should start shortly. And also let's remind that as of 20th, uh, 29 June 2023, all countries uh, have been assigned standard risk level, meaning this will impact their due diligence obligations. Um, we're coming to the end, but let's also look at the EU's engagement with producing countries, aiming for a successful transition of the EUDR um, and um, in this regard, the Commission, together with EU member states, uh, has put in place different programs linked to EUDR supply chains under the Team Europe initiative. This initiative will, among others, also focus on providing technical assistance and capacity building in the partner country. Further collaboration is driven through the EU Forest Partnerships Programme, which looks on forests more holistically and has so far made partnership agreements with five countries, namely Guyana, Mongolia, the Republic of Congo, Uganda and Zambia. Finally, to conclude this overview, a list of competent authorities in the EU countries was published recently. As a reminder, the national competent authority will be responsible for the enforcement of the EUDR in their respective country. Not all countries have designated their competent authorities yet, so we expect this list, also available on the Commission website, to be updated over time. And this brings me to the end of this overview. Thank you, Maya. Let me come back to a couple of points. There has been gradual progress of the implementation tools, Will the remaining 10 months be sufficient for the European Commission to prepare the tools and for the supply chain to adapt their business operations? Thank you, Fabien, for the question. And the timeline is indeed tight, as you rightly indicated. If I touch first at European Commission level, 
there is still some work to be done and uh, from PFC we will closely follow the progress but then also if the developments and the speed of this progress will in any case impact the EUDR timeline. In our interaction with uh, businesses we observe both. There are businesses that are very well aware of the EUDR and the responsibilities um, and are proactively preparing for the implementation. But there are also businesses that are only now learning about the EUDR and the amount of work it will bring. So we need to ensure that no one uh, is left behind and that different supply chains will be ready in time. Absolutely. Um, no one's left behind is, is critical. Um, and so what about uh, certification? How can certifications such as PEFC support the due diligence? So uh, certification uh, remains relevant, a relevant tool. Um, and uh, as part of the due diligence, of course, uh, there are uh, the three steps where the, the certification can support. So starting with the information gathering, but also as part of the risk assessment and risk mitigation. And as we will hear later on, also PFC is preparing in this direction. Uh, but uh, more than that, the certification will provide assurances uh, with relevant deforestation free and legality requirements. Uh, and although it is not a green lane uh, in the EUDR as specified by the regulation, uh, of course, um, it will remain a strong support uh, in a strong support function. Great. Thank you, Maya. Dear listeners, if you'd like to ask Maya a question, drop it into the Q&A and we'll come back to it um, at the end of this uh, session. Moving on to our second speaker, I would like to invite my colleague Hubert Inheiser. Hi Hubert. Hi Fabian. Hubert will uh, update you on our sustainable forest management work stream towards EUDR alignment. But before handing over, uh, I will share his impressive bio. So Hubert has over 15 years of experience in sustainable forest management. After his forestry, um, after his forestry studies in Hungary, Russia and Czech Republic, he worked at the Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia of FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, focusing on forest policy projects in the region. Hubert then joined the European Forest Institute, where he led projects connected to the Forest Europe process and various EU policies instruments, including the ex post evaluation of the EU Forest Action Plan and the support study for development of the non-legislative acts of the EU timber regulation. He also supervised various forest management and habitat restoration projects along with other field operations. In 2020, Hubert joined PFC International to take on the responsibility for critical work on sustainable forest management development and assessments of national and regional forest certifications system. Hubert, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fabian, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to see so many of you because this is indeed a very uh, important subject on how PFC Sustainable Forest Management Standard going to tackle the EUDR requirements. The objective is very clear that we need to make the PFC certified material ready for the EU supply chains. This is the objective which uh, is driving the sustainable forest management work stream within PFC. Our approach is that we address the EUDR requirements at the core of the PFC ST1003 the PFC Sustainable Forest Management Benchmark Standard, and it won't be 
a complementary or modular approach. So that means that we do not offer deforestation free certified material only as an option. It will be the default. The work stream platforms are structured around the sustainable forest management working group, which is the highest level uh, technical decision making body in forestry within PEFC. We just recently renewed the membership of this working group, and we just recently had the inauguration meeting focusing on particularly the EUDR alignment process. Now, this working group, despite the fact that it has a wide range of stakeholders on board, we do mobilize the PFC national governing body members through task forces to complement the working group and its efforts. And we have two of these. Uh, one of them is the EUDR SFM task force. And the other one is the Trees Outside Forest Task Force. And these groups and these experts are working hand in hand to reach the objective of this work stream. The key issues are, not surprisingly, uh, the various forest types, the various forest categories, forest degradation, and of course, the Trees Outside Forest which since 2018 is an innovative element of the sustainable forest management standard. Now, I don't want to guide you through all the details. However, I think it's very, very important to show the differences of the approach to sustainable forest management in terms of the structure of how we are addressing those areas which we are uh, targeting with certification. In the PFC structure, we consider uh, forest as a point of departure. This is the you know, core of our DNA. And within the forest, we identify the forest plantation. And outside of the forest, we look into trees outside forest as a general category on agriculture and settlement areas. Now, as you can see on the EUDR structure, it's being a bit more fragmented. I don't want to read it out for you because many of you already know these categories. However, it's, it's fundamentally important that we do recognize that these categories have a significant impact at their members level in the national working groups when they do discuss these elements. And this is the reason why we need to invest such time and energy in these work team platforms to make sure that everybody is feeling confident to have these categories on board and to able to readjust and improve their standards accordingly. Once we have uh, these discussions and we have consensus on how to update the PFCST 1003, the benchmark standard, we are taking a big step towards the objective, but given the fact that PFC relies entirely on the national adaptation and the national standards of uh, sustainable forest management, uh, the national adaptation will have a very high relevance including the time frame on how these working groups are able to adapt those changes, how to uh, be able to better spell out these particular elements, but in the same time, how quickly we are able to go on with the assessment of these changes and verify these changes. But we are doing everything in our capacities that we are turning to 2025 with all of this in place and that the PFC certified material is able to deliver to the new supply chains and beyond. 
Thank you, Hubert. Um, so you've covered a, a fair amount about the, the scope for alignment, uh, the roadmap for alignment on PFC sustainability benchmark, uh, where we are fairly confident to meet the 31st of December deadline. And you also touch on our national um, members. So what about the national rollout? Can you tell us about how PFC and those members are getting ready? Yes, thank you very much for this question, Fabian. This is indeed uh, a very important element in the process because we do have uh, 46 systems covering 50 countries and uh, all of them have their special characteristics, special set of stakeholders, uh, working group arrangements and standard setting procedures and the related processes. Now, the PEFC framework allows time critical revision uh, in the standard setting procedures and uh, many of our members going to mobilize these options already in parallel of the international developments to be ready with the documentation, to be ready with the technical proposals of what they're going to uh, discuss at the national level. But in the same time, we do have some members there are a bit binded by the procedures because some of the cases they are connected to the national standard setting organization with their own set of rules. And these are the cases where we try to take special attention, uh, keep them informed and uh, make them sure that they understand what needs to be addressed at the right time. And this is the reason that we generally invest in capacity building a fair amount of time and energy from the Secretariat to make sure that the NGBs are ready to take those actions in the time when it's needed and when it's available. So having said this, uh, there is no one code fits all in, in this uh, preparation, but we do make sure that we facilitate this uh, national development in order to make this objective and be ready in time. Thank you. All very clear, Hubert. And, and we certainly have been onboarding our members through um, various channels of communications and dialogue to ensure their readiness. Um, moving on to cutoff date, what do you think? How, how limiting is the cutoff date in this context? That's, that's something which is uh, very interesting in the PEFC setting because uh, our current documentation has a more uh, demanding uh, cutoff date because we set the, uh, the cutoff date uh, for 2010. So actually in the alignment process, we, were have this, we had discussions whether or not to keep the 2010 or the 2020, but the alignment will yeah. suggest that we're going to increase the cutoff date uh, for the EUDR purposes as well to 2020. So that means that uh, in our setup, we have access for PFC certified plantations for another 10 years, which we didn't make that much of an impact study on what would be that in terms of amount. But clearly, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, an improvement possibility in terms of uh, coverage of forest areas, which will be eligible to contribute to the sustainable supply chains. Interesting. And my final question would be about um, my final my fi and my final question is about uh, the impact. So what would be the impact of the EUDR on forest management practices? I think that this is something which, uh, which keeps um, many uh, forest, manager, forest managers busy around the world. Um, in my opinion, a PFC uh, SFM certificate holder already made a big commitment to sustainability, not only for uh, saying no to deforestation, but considering biodiversity, considering carbon storage, considering health and vitality of the forest, the vitality of the soil and the water resources, including 
uh, all the social social economic uh, elements of it. So I think the PEFC uh, forest management practices are not not far, even they are beyond the EUDR uh, requirements. It's it's uh, clearly a, a specific way on how to uh, spell it out and how to provide evidence for certain aspects of it, of course. And this is uh, the alignment process, um, what it brings along. For example, the GAO location, this is something very, very uh, clear. But I think none of our PFC certified uh, forest managers are aiming to convert forest into agriculture use or aiming to uh, convert into uh, plantations. There are situations where these, uh, uh, particularly due to the climate change uh, and the natural disasters, uh, the current forest stands are not vital enough to maintain those forest functions. But this is not considered, uh, if these changes are implemented, these are not considered deforestation, but on the other hand, improving and climate mitigated actions. So in my opinion, in short, because this is indeed a very interesting and very overarching topic, in my opinion, PFC already does much more than uh, saying no to deforestation with all the other criteria what we implement. It's an important element and we will be very proud to show it and display it much more prominently as like we're doing it now. Fantastic. In, indeed, PFC sustainable forest management practices are, are much more than um, the old deforestation. Thank you very much, Hubert. Um, thank you. We are now moving to our third speaker. Our third speaker is Marta Martinez Pardo, who is not only leading the chain of custody work stream, but is also leading the EUDR project uh, at PFC as a whole. Welcome, Marta. First, a few words on Marta's background. Marta has a Bachelor in Political Science, followed by a Master in Government and Administration from the University, Universidad Complutense de Madrid. And she also has a second Master in Integrated Management. Marta has over 10 years experience in certification arena, first as a quality manager. She joined PFC in 2015, to work on developing standards through multi-stakeholder dialogue, to create solutions for the supply chain, to respond to regulatory framework and sustainability requests. Marta, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fabienne, and hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. So I'm gonna walk you through the solution that PFC is developing for chain of custody organizations, which is the PFC EUDR due diligence system. It's built up over, over existing chain of custody requirements. The aim is to translate the EUDR regulation into steps that are understandable to support organizations to bring the material in alignment with EUDR. It's a module and it's compatible with the current standard 2002 in such a way that it just replaced the existing DDS by this new PFC UDR DDS. And the development is being conducted by a multi-stakeholder working group, the permanent PFC chain of custody working group. And this working group is composed by chain of custody experts representing different stakeholders, the main stakeholders within the supply chain from certification bodies to users of the scheme. I mentioned that it's a module and that it's volunteer, voluntary. What does it mean? It means that it's up to the organization to decide whether they want to implement it or not. And it's to be implemented at product group level. It can be used by any organization within the supply chain and it can easily be integrated in the current chain of custody processes. It's a replacement. So instead of the current 
chapter 7 and appendix 1 of the PFC standard 2002, we use this PFC UDR DDS. The steps are almost the same as the current DDS. Collection of information, risk assessment, substantiated concerns, management of significant risk supplies, so risk mitigation, and no placement on the market. There is just one additional step in between the management of significant risk supplies and the no placement on the market for organizations that act as operators within the supply chain. Key concepts. There are new definitions and the definitions are mainly based on EUDR to make it as easy as possible. The working group decided to implement the existing definitions of EUDR. There are additional information requirements. EUDR requires organizations to, uh, record, to, to record further and report on further information. My colleague Rob will touch a little bit on that one. And the way the working group is articulating this on the draft, this pass on of the for information is through a declaration, what it's called on the draft, PLC UDR declaration. To integrate this as easy as possible within the current chain of custody, there is a new classification of material. So in addition to the current one, PFC certified material, PFC control sources, other material and neutral material, we have an additional classification for organizations to easily identify which material needs to go through the full EUDR DDS and which material can skip some of the parts of this DDS. The classification is PFC EUDR pre-declared. This pre-declared is for those organizations that decide to implement this module and on the supply chain, they are prior to the operator. And PFC EUDR declared. This is the one that will start with the operator, an operator that will already have submitted the due diligence statement into the EU database, can already say that it's declared and pass on this claim and the further uh, companies within the supply chain after the operator the same. And the third classification is not PFC declared. So material that didn't go at all through the PFC UDR DDS. A key definition, it's the definition for sources not in compliance with EUDR. It's the way the risk assessment is articulated. So we have the controversial sources definition and on the top of that one, this PFC EUDR DDS works with the sources not in compliance with EUDR based on Article 3 from the directive. Activities where deforestation and forest degradation occurs after 31st December 2020. Activities not in compliance with relevant legislation. And material that is placed on the union market without an EUDR identifier, which means that the operator didn't comply with its obligations towards EUDR. And this definition is key to articulate the risk assessment. So the risk assessment is a slightly different, it's a slightly different approach from the current DDS is divided in four steps and the risk needs to be proved that is negligible independently for each of the four steps. The first one, it's composed of several tables in order to identify that the risk for the material to come from deforestation or forest degradation is negligible. Otherwise, we need to mitigate the risk. Second risk assessment, illegality. So again, two tables to demonstrate that the material doesn't come from illegal sources. And in case that the result from this risk assessment is that it's not negligible, we go to the risk mitigation. The third step co covers controversial sources. Why? Because uh, there are some parts where our controversial sources definition goes beyond. And here there is a table based on the current DDS that covers that part. And the fourth step covers the risk of mixing at supply chain level, which is a mixture between the current DDS table that assess the risk at the supply chain and EUDR requirements. This way, the risk assessment is conducted individually. It needs to be negligible risk for each of them. If for one of them, the risk is not neg negligible, then we mitigate the risk for that specific part. And that was all what I wanted to share today with you all. 
regarding the PFC UDR DDS approach and where we are right now with it. Thank you, Marta. Um, let me come back to some of the important points that you made. You talked about the voluntary, um, that this will be a modular voluntary standard. What does it mean and how will it be integrated within the current chain of custody standard? The objective of the working group uh, from the beginning has been to develop something simple, easy to implement, and that can be easily integrated within the current chain of custody process. Thus, the PFC UDR DDS is limited to definitions and DDS requirements in such a way that if an organization implements this DDS, it can fully replace the current DDS on standard 2002, while all the other chain of custody requirements remain the same. Thank you, Marta. It clarifies that point. Uh, another point I would like to come back to on the controversial sources. So I understand that PFC's current approach on the existing DDS, um, um, avoid controversial sources, goes already beyond EUDR in certain aspects. So in this new PFC EUDR DDS, is it also covering sourcing risk from controversial sources? Indeed. From the beginning, it was one of the decisions um, our controversial sources definition goes beyond EUDR in several aspects, such as avoiding conflict forest and trace-based material within the supply chain, uh, genetically modified material, or material where the production doesn't respect or maintain the productivity of the forest. And as we wanted to make it compatible, but we wanted to minimize the risk that controversial sources enter the supply chain, even within this PFC EUDR DDS, there is a step on the risk assessment that includes the assessment of the risk from controversial sources. And this risk needs to be mitigated in case that the result from the risk assessment is that there is risk. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me check the time. Yes, we have time for one last uh, question. How is this PFC EU DDS tool going to help companies? Um, the aim of the PFC UDR DDS is to translate, to develop a, a tool to translate the regulation into requirements that are easily understood and can be implemented. Additionally, as the PFC UDR covers any company within the supply chain, it will facilitate the transfer of information and the, verific the verification of the information. We need to consider that it's a certification scheme, so it involves the independent third-party audits layer of assurance. When you are sourcing material from a PFC certified supplier, that it's also that the scope of the certification is extended to cover this PFC EUDR DDS, and you receive this material under a declaration where your supplier confirms that it, the material went into the PFC UDR DDS and resulted in negligible risk, you can already ascertain that the DDS was conducted and a third party is verifying this as well. That's the additional level of uncertainty that the certification process provides. Wow, thanks, Marta. This gives our, our listeners um, complicated yet important information uh, as to how PFC is working towards alignment um, to EUDR and help companies to be EUDR compliant. So a reminder to the audience before we move to our next speaker, if you have some questions for Marta, please drop them, uh, type them into the Q&A uh, app. Thank you. Thank you, Fabian. Last but not least, I would like to invite my colleague, Rob Shaw, our fourth expert. Hi, Rob. Hi, Fabian. Rob will update you on the all-important data integrity work stream. But before that, I would like to share the wealth of knowledge that Rob has. He graduated in forestry in Aberdeen, Scotland, and worked for a large private forestry management company in the UK for 26 years. 
creating the first PFC and FSC group scheme nationally. He spent eight years as ACQ director in charge of certification, quality, environment and safety. He served as a non-executive director of PFC UK for 15 years. In 2016, Rob joined the technical team of Soul Association certification and qualified as an auditor and trainer for both forest management and chain of custody and carried out numerous audits around the world, as well as leading the technical team. Between 2016 and 2019, he undertook an executive MBA at Edinburgh University, focusing on digital transformation in forestry auditing for his dissertation. Rob joined PFC International in a new role of Senior Integrity Manager in October 23. Welcome to you, Rob. The floor is yours. Thanks, Fabienne. And hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to update you on the uh, PEFC EUDR Data Task Force, which is part of the uh, combined efforts of the Chain of Custody Working Group and the Sustainable Forest Management Working Group. Um, the data task force is very much focusing on the geolocation and harvesting date data and other EUDR required uh, data which comes from certified organizations um, going into the chain of custody supply chain. Uh, the data task force is up and running. We've held three meetings so far and we have a further three meetings to go. Um, we're starting to get some good interactions with external partners, including the European Space Agency, who are going to fund a pilot project with us, and potential service providers such as LiveEO. And also one member of the Data Task Force has also presented to us a case study of the solutions which they're planning for EUDR. In terms of the research and the interactions, uh, which I'm undertaking along with the task force, we're looking at various external IT service providers who could potentially partner with PEFC to provide technological solutions. Um, but we do need to further understand the European Union FAQs in terms of uh, specific complex issues such as batched consignments, the potential to submit larger plot data sets, um, the role of SMEs versus non-SMEs, both within and out with the European Union, and the definitions of operators versus traders. As part of this work, I've uh, sent out a data survey to all of the PEFC national governing bodies, and we will be meeting in March to look at the results of the data survey and look further into what database development the PEFC family can undertake in 2024. There's also a linkage to auditing and reporting, so we're lucky to have certification bodies represented on the task force, and we will be working with certification bodies later this year to make sure the auditors are trained and that the certification bodies are ready to adapt their reporting uh, techniques. There are other chain of custody impacts, um, including such things as the requirement to add species information as part of the data. So this work will be linked to the chain of custody working group to, uh, to make sure that we are ready uh, when the time comes to integrate all these requirements into our standards. We're now switching the data task force action into a focus on outputs. And these will include optional due diligence statement and risk assessment solutions through technology. Um, we will be focusing in the second half of 2024 on issuing out guidance and training to certified organizations and forest owners and certification bodies. We're actively involved in giving feedback to the EU on the issues that we've discovered to date. And all of this work will inform a wider PEFC data strategy. We're especially interested in how PEFC can help certified forests and smallholders in capturing geolocation data and moving it efficiently through the supply chain. It's quite a tight timetable because we're running to May 2024 to try and bring all this work together. This, this graphic on screen just now shows you a typical flow of material from the forest through a supply chain within the European Union. 
And it's interesting here because, of course, the, the first operators in the supply chain could actually be the forest owners. So we need to understand how this will actually work, uh, especially when the forest owners themselves might be SMEs. The second graphic I'm showing you now shows a typical flow of timber coming from outside the EU and coming into the EU via an, an operator importer. So there are different dynamics at work here and we're really digging into the detail to see and understand how this will work in practice in the real world. There are some current contradictions and uncertainties that we're grappling with. Um, and this has been echoed by quite a lot of people I've spoken to and also members of the, of the task force who represent both large and small companies. As you know, the EU are behind on the country benchmarking announcements. The pilot testing of their IT system has thrown up some uh, quite significant issues to be, to be fixed within 2024. And everyone is waiting for further guidance on implementation and how the, the implementation will work in each of the EU member states. We understand by talking to our partners and talking to the members of the task force that large corporations are making their own internal system solutions and they have no desire for double or triple efforts in, in trying to link into other systems that may be created. So all of these uncertainties are, are, are hampering the, the, the forward progress, um, but we're continuing to talk to everybody so that we can understand everyone's issues and try and come up with a solution that pleases most of the people. And finally, I just want to mention that beyond the UDR, um, part of my new role is to, is to create and work up a PEFC data strategy. Um, because we have other initiatives, including Red2, and a wider need to develop our GIS and database knowledge so that we can have information internally for analysis and also externally to demonstrate impact. But in the meantime, the priority is to facilitate compliance for the forest owners and the COC organizations within the PEFC family. But we do need to be respectful of data privacy and security. So there are some large hurdles to overcome in the next few months. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Rob. Uh, needless to say that there's definitely a lot of considerations and parameters um, for, for the data uh, tracking and accuracy. So coming back to a few um, elements that you touched on, the first one is on USPA. Can, can, you, can you tell the audience a little more about the, pilot, the USPA pilot project? That sounds quite exciting. Yes, thanks, Fabienne. Yes, so, so the European Space Agency, or USPA, uh, they're funding a pilot project with us um, where we're going to focus on um, PEFC certified smallholders and forest owners. And the two countries that we're running with is Italy and Brazil. So this will allow us to test methods of uh, collecting geolocation and forest data and then comparing that data and the information with various different satellite analysis providers. And that will show us what works for checking the EUDR compliance for forest degradation and potential deforestation. And this is actually building on a similar project that USPA did for the coffee industry. So we'll, we'll be looking to share all the learning outcomes from this with the PEFC family and with certified organizations in due course. So this project will be running over the next three to four months. Excellent. We, we, we clearly often talk about uh, cross-commodity uh, collaboration and, and, and learning. So this is a, this is a good example. Um, another question or another point I would like to come back to, um, you mentioned that there is more to learn from the EU on issues such as batch consignments and um, operators uploading a bigger data set and role of the SMEs. Can you, can you explain a little bit on that? Uh, no, yes, I can, yeah. So the, the, the EU FAQs page um, has highlighted that in some circumstances, a bigger geolocation data set can be uploaded than was actually used to create a particular consignment. And this is very interesting for larger companies who have um, continuous production processes and could be buying from, for example, group forest certification 
So we need to understand how this will work in practice. So in low risk countries, it might become common practice but it's not really in 100% alignment with the spirit of the legislation. Um, the issue is that forestry supply chains are very, very large and complex, so the implementation has to be achievable. Um, and so if you are putting in more forest owner um, land plots than was actually used in a particular batch of product, then you've got to be confident that they're all in compliance. Um, there's also uncertainty about the difference in the implementation and enforcement for, for SMEs. So the larger companies and the operators are going to have gaps in their data for the first half of 2025 um, due to the different timelines for compliance. So again, we really need to understand the details of this. I see. So so we're really advancing in, in a set of known and unknown uh, elements right now. And then finally, we, ha we have time for one last question before we, we open the Q&A to the audience. Um, a question that I'm sure um, some of you would like to, to, to hear about. Is BFC pursuing blockchain or another overarching solution? That's a good question, Fabienne. Um, at present, we're not looking at blockchain, but that's not to say that we wouldn't look at it in the future. Um, the Data Task Force is comprised of a range of experts from around the globe, and it represents um, both very large multinational corporations and smaller ones. And we also have on board PEFC national governing bodies and certification bodies and trained auditors. So right now we're maintaining an open mind about the different kinds of technology solutions that we may partner with. Um, what is clear is that much of the heavy lifting in terms of effort is going to fall to the forest owners and managers at the start of the supply chain and then the operators further down the supply chain who are going to be importing into the EU or exporting out of the EU. So right now, I think it's too early to try and uh, impose any solutions as techniques. And, and we need to be especially um, recognizing that cultures and techniques around the world will vary. So we're, we're in listening mode at the moment, and we're going to try and um, formulate a consensus opinion as soon as we can. Very clear. Thank you, Rob. So thank you indeed. Um, this ends our first part of this webinar um, with the update from our various uh, experts. And now I would like to open to the audience for the Q&A.